Hi, I'm Arden Kaywin, and today's episode of the Pro Singer Success Collective is all about mental roadblocks. Stay tuned. we're going to talk about three really common mental roadblocks that can really derail you from your best singing and manifesting the success that you really want with your craft and your career and your art and what to do to shift them. So when we talk about freeing ourselves from the mental roadblocks, we're, we want to do that because these are the things that are really keeping you from successfully accessing the full potential of your voice and your instrument and proceed in a way that is going to make the biggest impact on your career and what you're trying to build with your, your voice and your music. But before we get into that, um, I, do, I do want you guys to just pause and think for a second and get the lay of the land in your own mind to start to identify what, what are the biggest things that have not been working for me, for you? What are the big things that haven't been working for you in your singing life? What, what hasn't been working for you for some time? Um, are you, you know, are you the, the singer who always gets into the callbacks, but, but doesn't get the part? Are you the singer who has a lot of professional credits, but you're always in the ensemble and you can't seem to get to that next level, right? Just, just take a minute and get some clarity on what are the biggest things that are not working for you in your singing life. And what I want to bring to you is this idea that there's nothing that can't be solved when we have clarity on it and when we're coming to it from a place of awareness. But when we don't, these roadblocks seem even bigger and even more unsurmountable because we, we're not even clear exactly what they are. It just feels like this stuckness, right? So one of the first things, so we're going to talk about three of what I have noticed and believe are the biggest roadblocks and what to do about them. So the first one, which I think a lot of you probably may have dealt with at various times throughout your singing journey and still maybe now is this idea of compare and despair. You guys ever heard that? Compare and despair. I'm looking at the other singers who are in my space. I'm looking at the singers who maybe I came up in school with in, in my music programs, or I'm looking at other bands out there who are submitting for things that I'm submitting, and I'm looking at them get stuff, and I don't. Why does that singer always get X, Y, Z, and I don't? Why, you know, all this compare and despair, why the, the, they have that success right now, and I don't, and I'm struggling. You know, it's all this looking outward and comparing inward, you know, looking at somebody else's outsides and comparing them to your insides. And it causes us to go down this spiral, which continues to disempower us. And it makes it really difficult for us to take inspired action towards the things that will move the needle and will make a difference in our technique and in the trajectory of our career. Because we're constantly, we're just asking the wrong questions. When you're asking, why not me? Why them? Why, you know, all these things, it's, it takes you into that lower vibration. It pulls you down into the heaviness and it makes it hard for you to act on your own behalf in ways that will bring you the, the sound that you want and the technique that you want and the, the opportunities that you want and, and allow you to actually take those opportunities when they are presented to you. So this idea of compare and despair that's to me one of the major mental roadblocks. And it also disconnects you from the truth of you. It makes you feel like you need to do something else or be something else or have something else in order to be successful. And when that's going on, you're not connected to the truth of you. You're not connected to 
everything that makes you interesting and special and unique as a singer and as an artist and all of the the challenges and the things that you have gone through that have built muscle that have gotten you to where you are today that can empower you to make choices that that will get you where you want to go so that to me that is roadblock number one compare and despair so hit me in the chat if you if you think that you've engaged with compare and despair or that you are engaging with compare and despair at the, you know, at the moment and don't blame yourself, don't judge yourself. You can just, you know, put your hand over your heart and be like, okay, I see that. I see that. I don't have to judge it. I can just say, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm doing that. The second thing that I see all the time that I can definitely identify as a roadblock um, to prevent you from being able to really access the full potential of your instrument and your career is what I call being on autopilot. So what is what does it mean being on autopilot? Being on autopilot to my in my mind means not actually being in the moment when you sing. So you're either in the past or you're in the future. You're not actually in the moment with your instrument and with the vibration and the energy and the sound, right? So you're, you're shaming yourself about something in the past that went wrong, you know, that, that, that didn't go well last time, or I didn't get this, or I wasn't able to achieve this, or my voice didn't show up this, right? So you're, you're either shaming yourself about the, fat, the past, or you're completely tripping out on the future, meaning, oh, this high note's coming up, or, um, you know, oh, I, th this audition, what if I don't get it, or what if I don't... Um, what if I don't, uh, you know, what if the record does bad and then I don't get enough spins or all of these things that you're, you know, projecting all the fears that you're projecting out from the future. Either one of those places that a lot of people live in the past or in the future, because that's where the monkey mind wants to live. When I say monkey mind, I mean ego mind. I mean not not your your highest self, your, your presence, your awareness, that part of you that is your life force, right? That's always in the present moment. And your body is always in the present moment. But mind wants to live in the past and in the future. And so when you're in the past and the future, you're just on autopilot. You're just spinning. You're either over here or you're over here. And you're not intentional and present in the moment you're in. And so when you're in this mind that's running on autopilot, shaming you about how bad the last audition went or freaking out about how, you know, the difficult section in the song that's coming up in a couple of bars or, or concerned about what everyone else is thinking about you, what the audience is thinking, how the auditioners feel about you, like, right? Like judging you if you think that they're all, you know, judging you and worrying about how they think that you sound. That's also autopilot. You're not uh, you're not in the present moment with your audience and with your with your sound and with what you're singing. And so either way, not knowing how to detach and just witness the sensations in your body when you sing in each present moment without judgment causes a whole domino effect of negative unwanted consequences in the sound and then in how you move forth in the opportunities in your career. So when you are, you know, just on autopilot, which means monkey mind run riot, not aware and intentional in the moment, you don't realize that your body physically is reacting to that spin of your mind. It's reacting to how much you're shaming yourself about the last time that it didn't that it didn't go well and you didn't sound good and you felt really embarrassed. And so it's going to contract. It's going to react to that because it doesn't want to experience that again because it's now future tripping because if I don't get it right, then I'm going to you know, not impress these auditioners. I'm not going to get the role and I'm not going to get my equity card. I'm not going to be able to make a living doing this. I'm going to have to go back to my crappy day job in the middle of nowhere, you know, wherever I came from, you know, and I'm going to be resentful and jaded and be that singer at 50 years old, you know, constantly wondering what if and hating my life because I knew I had a gift and a talent and I just couldn't and I'm not living it. Right. 
So all of that shit, pardon me, is showing up because ego mind is running riot. And when we let that happen and when we in, you know, are on autopilot and we're not intentional in our awareness, that's where we go. And the body physically reacts to that. And your body's your instrument. And your brain and your body have to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Congruent. They have to be congruent, right? Your body can't do what your brain is sabotaging, just like any other athlete. So we gotta we gotta learn how to disconnect from that autopilot and come back to the present moment detach from that stuff because it is having a physical effect in your body and your instrument that kicks you off your technique that causes you to stop trusting the technique that you know that causes you to go into overcompensation mode which would be control force push because you don't want to fail and so when you're on autopilot the mind is spinning and it's taking you to that place and so then you feel like you have to fit, you have to control, right? Versus the trust that comes with being in the present moment with the body, because then you're not in that domino effect of negative consequences that actually cause the body to sabotage the sound that you want to make. So it takes some trust. And that's a process of learning, but it can be done. It's done. I do it every day with the singers in my program. And so what I want to put forth to you is this idea that this roadblock, this mental, this mental roadblock of not being in the moment with your singing, just because it's there right now doesn't mean that there aren't ways to get past it and there aren't ways to break it so that you can come back to yourself in the moment and your presence and your awareness when you're singing, which is where the truth of your sound lives, which is where that amazing natural connection between you and your audience happens so that you can make an impact on them. And it's not just the best sound. It feels amazing too, because you're not in tension and strain and you're not freaking out about what's going to come out. You trust it. And in those moments, you're able to connect with what you're singing and you're able to connect with the audience. And when you do that, then you get the role. Then your recordings get traction. Your shows sell out because that connection is happening, which is what we need in order to make an impact as a performer. And that's what gets sidelined and sabotaged when we are in compare and despair, when we are on autopilot. And in the third roadblock, which I want to talk about today, which is this idea of not being able to separate yourself from your singing. And I know a lot of singers who will say, well, it's who I am. Singing is who I am. But there's a danger to that. Because when you're singing or your performance doesn't go the way you want, then you make yourself bad because of it. Then who you are, then it's, it's a knock on who you are. And so that sense of self, it becomes all entangled with your singing. And when we can't separate the singing from the self, then it makes it even more impossible to, to, to abide the things that you would perceive as failures or uh, things that don't pan out the way you want. And you guys, you, you know that when it comes to this career, that it is an up and down journey. That's what we've signed up for. You know, if you wanted a steady, stable journey, don't become a professional singer. Go get a steady day job that you like and then just sing and have fun on the side, on the weekends. And that's great. That can be incredibly fulfilling. But if what you want is to make a life out of your gifts and support yourself with your music, then you know that this is what you're signing up for. It, it's, it is a very up and down journey, okay? But if the sense of self is all up entangled with your singing, then it makes that up and down journey really difficult to stay for the long haul and to stay the course long enough so that you get success. It also makes it really hard to learn 
and to bounce back and be resilient from the things that maybe didn't work the way you wanted, right? If every time you go into an audition and you get into the callbacks and you get really close and then you don't get it, if singing is who you are and you are not succeeding at the singing, then the mind goes, well, then I am not succeeding as a self. And the self-esteem goes into the tank, the self-worth goes into the tank, and then all of that shows up in every other aspect of your life. Because when we don't feel good about ourselves and we don't feel empowered, then we tend to do things that sabotage in other ways. We tend to do things to cope because we don't want to feel all that ugh, ickiness. So maybe some of us go to food or alcohol or um, online shopping, video games, sex. Like I'm just going to, you know, relationships, maybe the wrong relationships. I'm just going to throw myself into this other person's great life so that I don't really have to think about mine. But then you lose yourself, right? And so it's a slippery slope. It's a very slippery slope, this idea of not being able to separate the singing from the self. But what it does is it prevents us from embodying the technique and the sound in the best possible way because if we don't sing well, and if not singing well becomes a reflection of us not being the, like, the best person or the best human, right? If, if, if I don't sing well, if it means that I'm bad because my singing is me and I am my singing, then we we're back in that negative feedback loop because I don't want to feel that. And so I'm going to do whatever I can to prevent that. So I'm going to make, force, do, manipulate, squeeze to make sure that that sound, to control that sound, because what I'm really trying to control is to have to prevent myself from feeling like shit. But at the end of the day, it's actually what causes the bad sound. It's what causes you to not connect with the audience. And so then the record doesn't land or the audition doesn't land or the tour, you don't sell the tickets that you want, you know? And then ironically enough, now you have evidence that you're not good enough, which now you take in which now makes you feel like you have even more to prove and more to control and more to force and manipulate so that you don't fail again. And of course, it's what makes it even harder to make that good sound, which makes it even harder to connect and make an impact and make the sound you want. You see, it goes in this negative feedback loop. So, so these three things, these three roadblocks, compare and despair, being on autopilot, not being able to separate yourself from your singing. They're biggies. They are biggies. And there's a reason that these are major roadblocks because they literally stop you in your tracks like a huge block in the road from accessing the full scope of your abilities, your talent, connecting to an audience, taking powerful steps to move forward in your career in a way that will really get you where you want to go. I mean, have you ever wondered why you feel like all your auditions go great, but then you don't get cast? Because you're on autopilot. That's the roadblock. You think you're doing great, but you're not there. You are not there. Have you ever wondered why you're out there making all this content, going live, posting videos, posting covers, doing all this stuff online, and it doesn't catch? Same reason. You're on autopilot. You're not present. You think you are, but your subconscious programming is doing something entirely different. You caring what people think, caring the way you look, it disconnects you. Needing to prove, needing to show that you're the real deal, that you're professional, whatever it is. Needing to be a certain way or look a certain way or sound a certain way that's not actually you. It disconnects you. People can feel that. It doesn't land. It disconnects you from being present. And that's the number one thing that makes the difference between those who have a career and those who don't is their ability to connect with their voice and their music, right? It's like, have you ever wondered why it feels so uncomfortable to invest in yourself in a big way 
And I'm, it's not about having the money. It's about getting resourceful to do whatever it takes to be able to make that investment in, in training, in hiring a producer, in, um, you know, whatever it is. Like, it's scary to get resourceful. Have you ever wondered why? It's because you can't separate the singing from the self. That's the roadblock. Because what if it doesn't work? What if I get resourceful and I invest a lot of money into a producer and, and, and it doesn't work? Or what if I you know, get super resourceful and I take on extra shifts in my job so I can do this training program because it's really what I think I need and, and it doesn't work? If that is running in the brain, if that's the conditioning, the, the what if it doesn't work, right? Then guess what? If that singing in that career doesn't go well, if you can't separate the singing from the self, then you as a person are a failure if that doesn't work. There's no separation. Failure in the singing in the career equals failure of self. And if that's what's at stake, you will never, ever take the risks, the inspired risks to get resourceful, to carve out the time, to make the investment. If the ultimate fear is if, it's, if it doesn't work, then I as self am a failure. Why would you ever put yourself out there for it? You won't. Why would you ever put yourself out there in a big way to invest in yourself, in a big way to get the training you need or to make the recordings or to move to a city that has opportunities? If where the mind is going is if it doesn't work out, then you are as a self are a failure. So you play it safe and you never get resourceful and you never invest and you play small you never play big and you just stay where you are. And you guys, this is not about your singing. It's not just about that. But your singing in your career cannot thrive at the level that you want until you've got the guidance and a proven plan to shift these things. You know, there are, there are those people who were just born under a lucky star and they're able to just kind of do this stuff intuitively. And that's great for them. But for the rest of us, we have to be taught. We need a system to get past this shit. We need support and we need structure because if we could do it on our own, we'd be doing it already. So if this is resonating with you and you are at that point where you're like, screw this. Like, I do not want to be in this place anymore. I know I have the roadblocks and I'm ready. I'm ready to get past them. Then book a call with me. And I know that you guys are like sitting on the sidelines. You've probably been watching me do these lives for a long time. And I always invite you to book a call with me at the end because a lot of this stuff is, is we're too close to it. It's too hard to see on our own and we need the support and the guidance to be able to get past it. And so that's why I invite you because this is the work that we do. This is the work that I do with singers. And it's it's high level technical training merged with proven mindful practice. And you guys, that's the rocket fuel. That's the rocket fuel that propels these singers into the reality that they've been craving, which is making a life out of their gifts instead of staying on the hamster wheel. You know, it's like, this is the opportunity for singers who already have a lot of technique and you have a lot of training and you've been out there trying to do the hustle and right now you just don't know what to do because it's not happening the way you want. And so it's like you're this, this rocket sitting on the launch pad with the, you know, tricked out with all this crazy, awesome technology, you know, you got all of the, 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 the tricked out technology, you got the technique, you got all this, you've been to school, you've done the hustle, da, 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 but you're still on the launch pad. And the reason why is you're missing the fuel. You're missing the fuel and getting past these roadblocks, understanding how to stop your brain from sabotaging your body, that's the fuel. And that's what I do with singers is to help you fuel your freaking rocket. So if you're ready for that, if you're, you know, this is not for new singers. 
So if you're somebody who hasn't had a lot of technique and you haven't had a lot of one-on-one -on -one training, you need that first. You need the technology. The rocket is not going to fly without that technology, okay? But if you've had that and you're still sitting on the launch pad wondering why you have not taken off, it's the roadblocks. And you may know what some of them are and you may not. And so I would invite you to book a call with me because that's what we're going to do on the call is we're going to get clarity. We're going to get clarity about what's been stopping you, about where you, we want to talk about where you want to go, what you really want. And if I think I can help, I will show you what that looks like and we'll see if it's a fit. And if it's not, that's okay too. It's just not for everyone, you know, but we're going to get some clarity and we're going to start to lay, I'm going to share with you the foundation and the strategy of how I, what, how all of these other singers who are doing this work of why they're succeeding. And I'm going to share with you the step-by-step -step strategy that, that I do with them and that can, that can help you fuel your rocket. And so if it resonates, awesome. And if it doesn't, that's okay. I will still love on you in the group. Um, so I would invite you to book a call with me. Don't be shy. It's totally free. And I do this because I want you guys to know that there is another way. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, and I will see you uh, next week. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. If you want to subscribe, click the link right over there that says subscribe. And if you want to book a breakthrough session with me, which you absolutely should do, then click the link right over here that says book a call to schedule an appointment to speak with us. I'll see you on the next episode.